Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're talking about pes anserine bursitis. What does that word even mean? <laughs> might be related to knee pain just a little bit. So if you think you might have some knee pain, some areas around this, tune in because we're gonna break it down. All right, we're gonna be talking about another bursitis, which if you remember that, it's just irritation of a bursa, which is generally meant to be there to prevent friction or rubbing of different tendons. And the tendons we're gonna talk about are part of the pes anserine area, which is on the inside of the knee, and it is made up of three main muscles that kind of all insert right in that area. Yeah, so if you feel like it's not next to like the kneecap or the knee joint, but if we go down from that area, it's on that lower leg. So it's, again, not associated necessarily with the knee joint, so it's going to feel different. It's could because it's more associated with those three muscles that Dom alluded to. So this is the sartorius muscle, so it comes from that lower inside leg or, or the the lower leg on the inside, and then it wraps all the way up and across the thigh to our hip bone. And mm -hmm. then we also have the gracilis, which again is gonna attach to that same area, and then it's gonna come up in our pelvis. So that's like our inner thigh. Think of it like a long skinny adductor muscle. And then we have the last one that also attaches into that area and it comes from the hamstring. So this is our semitendinosus, particularly that tendon that comes from that hamstring group. Uh, they make our hip externally rotate, they make our hip uh, extend, they make our hip flex, they make our hip adduct and abduct. <laughs> so again, this is just kind of an area in the knee that can have lots of things pulling at it and that's why we can get some irritation there. I think it's, the root of pes anserine is goose foot, right? Yes. Well, pes is oh, pes. Latin for foot and anserine is Latin for goose. So there you go. the goose is foot. Yes. <laughs> Anytime our bursa gets irritated, we might have a little bit of that swelling mm -hmm. or fluid or just tenderness in that area. And this is this tends to be one that kind of creeps up on you a little bit. It's not, again, you can really irritate it in one fell swoop if you don't normally run and suddenly you go and run 10 miles you might wake up and throughout the 10 miles, it might be creeping up on you, but you'll have some tenderness. It's kind of two inches down on the inside of that leg. And again, you might then after that have pain if you're walking or sitting to standing, going upstairs. If you try going back to exercise or activity, then you might have pain in that area. Yeah, and when we're talking about like tenderness, so if you if you feel down like right below that knee on the inside, right, and you kind of rub it, and then you rub the other side, right, because we're always looking for what is your body's normal. And honestly, if yeah. you've never touched this area of your body, it might be tender. So it's really, we wanna not just look at it as tender to the touch, but tender during movement. Is it is it functionally kind of holding you back from some of the things that you love to do? So what are some of the things that might contribute to us developing this bursitis? It's the things that are done repetitively over and over and over again without yeah. any mindfulness in the other direction or in a different way, right? And so if we're continuously kind of tugging right at that tendon, the same motion, the same way, over and over again, that could eventually lead to some tenderness and some inflammation right into that bursa. Because again, this like these bursa sacs, they're meant to reduce friction right. of those tendons rubbing over that bone, the tibia, um, which is that lower uh, bone of our leg. And the bursa is meant to kind of like prevent a lot of rubbing there. So mm -hmm. if we're doing things repetitively, if we're doing things with slightly, you know, suboptimal mechanics for our body that would put more pressure through those tendons, uh, that could contribute to it or some things that just might increase the friction overall right like if we already have osteoarthritis of the knees yeah if we are somebody who has diabetes that can uh, create more friction or less lubrication in those areas or even somebody who might hold a little more weight if you um, are a little bit obese that can again just create more friction with the same movements but i don't really like when they say you know like oh flat feet contributes to it 
or, yeah, or valgus like ba- muscle like, imbalances and like what does that even mean <laughs> totally it can be a contributor but you're not going to look at somebody who has flat feet and say you're going to have pezanserine bursitis like, i know doesn't go that other direction so and muscle imbalances like we're going to have muscle imbalances throughout our entire body we're more right hand dominant than left hand or we're more you know we kick with the right leg more than you know that we're just going to have differences throughout the body so i don't like that one either and i think as we go into and talk about these specific muscles more you'll understand that it's becoming more adaptable in all of these different ranges and strength that we have available within the body. The first thing we like to always try and do is maybe reduce some of that pain, reduce some of that irritability, get the swelling to come down a little bit. Um, So, you know, before, of course, we return back to really high level impact stuff. What are some ways that you like to reduce swelling? Um, I like to lay with my legs up against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. All right. We are talking about lower extremities, so that works. <laughs> right? I mean, I guess that's just one that's fun to do at the end of the day, especially yeah. if you've been up on your feet a lot, if yeah. you've been dealing with this, if you still need to go to work and you're standing around, like <laughs> sit with your butt kind of scooted up against the wall and your legs straight up in the air. And if you just sit there and like pump your ankles and just hang out for five or 10 minutes, it can be, I, I love the feeling of that. So general movement of the legs is going to help do that getting your ankles pumping getting your knees pumping i also love to do some lymphatic flow stuff yeah so like dry brushing to get the lymph mm-hmm. flowing if you have inflammation in the local area if you get your lymph flowing systemically that's going to be great at just helping bring down a little bit of that swelling a little bit and we did do a podcast on uh lymphatic drainage if you want to listen back to that one also uh, you know what i thought was really cool the other day um you weren't here but I had two PTs actually over (laughs) and Shante Cofield, shout out to the movement maestro. She said that she had taken someone's course and it was all about lymphatics and she gets some knee swelling and it's something that she's kind of always battled and she continues to work through. And anytime she gets knee swelling, she just does a little bit of lymphatic work up on her left, like right above her collarbone at her subclavius. And she does some work with like the gorgeous ball and the, and the therapy ball from tune up fitness. And when she does work there, the next day she wakes up, no more swelling in her knee. Doing some breath work. Breath work. I mean, work. if we do some yeah. like really good focused breath work, we have so many lymphatic nodules that live underneath our rib cage, mm-hmm. that live kind of in our hips by our pelvic floor. So again, it makes sense that if you work on some of those central lymph nodes, you can get the stuff peripherally to flow a little bit better. Exactly. And then we always just want to look at what are we putting in our body? Is it is it inflammatory to us individually? You know that we all have different sensitivities to food and nutrients. Are we getting adequate nutrients? Are we getting enough water? Are we sleeping? Are we Mm -hmm. super high stress levels? Like we have to remember that systemically, this all plays a role in swelling and inflammation. And then if we get all that to come down, if the knee's not as sensitive anymore, then we just kind of start to assess on a step-by-step basis. Okay, how is my range of motion? How's Mm -hmm. my range of motion at the knee specifically? Can I flex the knee all the way back? Can I extend the knee all the way? How about at my hips? Because again, all those muscles come up and cross the hip. Am I able to go into internal and external rotation? Am I able to extend the the leg fully? Mm -hmm. And if you need a little bit more guidance on an assessment, yes, you can always go see a physical therapist and we recommend that 100%, especially if you're currently in pain. However, if you just want to explore your range of motion Mm. in your body, you know that we have a self-assessment tool in the mobility method. It's really good to Mm. just get this this test and, and kind of see where your body is. And then from there... Do we have strength in all of these motions? Can we actually put tension through the muscles in all of these planes across the hip and then functionally progress that into standing movements and dynamic stuff and then more so like sports specific things? Yeah, what you like and sports specific means what you like to do in your everyday life, right? So if that's carrying groceries because you got to do it outside of the car and kind of twist or or hold a kid at the same time, you know, it's like those are all functional sport related activities to your life. Yeah. And so if we're talking about each specific muscle and maybe a couple things that we can do because there's three of them here. So how can we even pinpoint like, okay, what should I do for the gracilis? We talked about how that's on the inside of the leg might be one of those groin muscles or adductors that more so brings the leg back into center. We could do adductor rock backs Mm -hmm. or Copenhagen planks. Mm -hmm. Um, These are things that we've mentioned before in podcasts or on Jen's feed. She talks about a lot of these things. It's a cool thing to remember that it's not 
you know, just about stretching, but it's also, we need that strength in the area as well. Totally. And being able to kind of do something that's going to activate and put tension into all of these motions, it can really so teach key. your body. Oh, this is the area that I may have been ignoring myself. Yeah. Like the sartorius, which yeah. is what, what is it that you like to say? It's the Faber muscle. That's Faber. what we learned in school because <laughs> it does flexion abduction so kind of bringing the leg away from the body and then external rotation so kind of yeah. and it's almost like if you think you're lying on your back and you take your heel and you draw it up along your shin that is your mm -hmm. favorite muscle that's literally your sartorius really in its most active state because it's doing that flexion abduction and external rotation so if you get some irritation with that or it feels weak or it's hard you know that's kind of a good test that you can do just to see how that muscle is firing and acting totally and the last muscle is the semi tendinosis which if you reach around kind of the backside or the inside of your knee you'll feel this little ropey, ropey. muscle <laughs> on the inside and that's the semi tendinosis and you can almost follow but that to the point that it dives in and then wraps around into that goose's foot <laughs> and what that does is it flexes our leg back at the knee and also extends at the hip yeah and we talked about hamstring strains in another podcast if you really want to like dive into yeah. hamstrings a lot more but what's cool is like okay we don't just need knee flexion and extension exercises but we also need hip range of motion mobility. We also mm -hmm. need hip range of motion control, stability, strength. And then how does that play all together from the foot up? Because none of our, this moves in isolation. We move from our base to support our feet. So how are our feet responding to all of these things? And so, again, there's no one exercise, one stretch. I'm so sorry to say. <laughs> If you're feeling pain at the knee, you're generally going to also have to look at the ankle and the hip and the whole system, yep. which again, there's always a time to go in and find somebody who might be able to help you dice through. Okay. These are the few things that I think would most benefit you to look at. But if you think this might be something you're dealing with, try some of those exercises that we brought up. Yeah. Try exploring a little bit yourself and you'll be amazed at what you can find within your own body with just a little bit of your own self experimentation. Thanks for tuning in for another PT Pearl from the Optimal Body Podcast to talk all about that Pez Anserine knee pain and what you can do about it. If you loved anything or have any questions, comment below, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll see you next time.